It's now six days since the explosion occurred in the Adei area, Old Bodija, Ibadan, Oyo State, and reports from the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, reveals that five persons lost their lives and 77 injured. The cherry news from the Oyo State Governor, Shea Makinde, says 95% of the victims have been discharged from the hospital, while the federal government, on its part, says forensic audit is being awaited before major decisions will be taken. These are great moves, but the issues of explosive uh, s expose some lapses in the nation's safety and security ecosystem. So, Panorama today focuses on the Ibadan explosion and the lessons learned going forward. We have a seasoned professional in the field to analyze the issues. He is Professor Benga Oknola, head of the Department of Geology, University of Ibadan. President Geological Society of Africa and past president Nigerian Mining and Geosciences Society. Welcome to Panorama. I am Nolin Ebelame. <laughs> Victims of Kitenda explosion in Giwa local government area of Kaduna State are responding to treatment at the Amadubelo University Teaching Hospital Zaria. Lowell Salo reports that the casualties are pupils of Quranic school in Kitenda. Here are the remaining five victims of a suspected explosive device last Saturday afternoon at Kitenda village receiving treatment. One of them was confirmed dead less than an hour after their arrival, while three of them were discharged at the time of compiling this report. A 16-year-old Awal Ibrahim, who came to the school just two weeks ago from Sawalawa village of Brinimbag local government, said a group of pupils bought the unidentified device from a bush on their way to fetch firewood. As they brought it to the school, a pin was removed from it. And as it falls down, it just exploded. I'm feeling better now. The remaining victims with shrapnel to various parts of their bodies will remain in the hospital until they are stable. The important incident will no doubt make another unforgotten history in the life of Awal Ibrahim, whose parents transferred him from another school a few weeks ago. Lawal Salaw, NTA News. The federal government is awaiting the outcome of a forensic investigation ordered to ascertain the actual cause of the tragic explosion that rocked Ibadan, Oyo State Capitol, last week. At the last Federal Executive Council meeting, President Bolatin will constitute an interministerial committee led by Dele, Dr. Dele Alake to come up with a blueprint to effectively and efficiently secure solid minerals forest and marine economy, which constitutes Nigeria's natural resources. Dele Alake had in a meeting of uh, condolence, message of condolence to the families of victims commended or your state uh, government for mobilizing relief response. He also indicated that the ministry has deployed mine inspectorate officers to the scene of the explosion to join other security agencies to unravel the cause of the explosion to avert a recurrence. Dr. Alake says there will be an expanded meeting with heads of security agencies, which will assist the committee in getting the requisite inputs that will guide it in turning in a robust report to the president. The minister assures Nigerians that the federal government is committed to addressing challenges from the root before making a definite pronouncement. That way, the people are better informed. Culprits can be brought to the book, and uh, concerted efforts will be in place to avoid a recurrence. Meanwhile, Oyo State Governor Shea Makinde says 90% of victims of the explosion have been discharged from various hospitals. The governor noted that the medical team of the Emergency Operations Center and the state's commissioner for health, Dr. Oluwa Sheremi Adetunmubi, 
uh, visited the two hospitals attending to victims. The governor stated this in an update on the incident which was released on Sunday, noting that the death toll so far still stood at five. Governor Makinde added that a clinical psychologist has begun counseling for victims of the incident at the emergency operations center located at the Oyo State Housing Corporation, Bodija Ibadon. As I earlier told you, we have a Professor Benga Oknola, Head of the Department of Geology, University of Ibadan, President Geological Society of Africa, past President Nigerian Mining and Geosciences Society, to discuss more on the issue. Uh, Professor, you are welcome to Panorama. Thank you very much. You left Ibadan this morning and made it to the studio. We must appreciate you for that. It's my pleasure. Yeah, All right. Um, what was your <coughs> initial reaction when the explosion occurred last week, Wednesday? Yeah, I, I think, first of all, uh, we need to commensurate with uh, the families of the, uh, those ones that lost their lives, unfortunately, and also the, the wounded and those who have uh, had their properties destroyed. That's a false point. I think the reaction is that it's something that could have been avoidable. It's, it's avoidable. And it's, it was an unnecessary disaster. And I hope that lessons have been learned. So my initial reaction was this thing was not necessary. It shouldn't have happened if all things are done the way it should be done. That's my initial reaction. What are those things uh, you are expected uh, should be done uh, before the incident, uh, you know? Yeah, I, I think, first of all, there were breaches along the line. Uh, the laws are there. Uh, the laws that govern handling of explosives, the laws that govern, uh, you know, usage of explosives, storage of explosives, distribution of explosive materials, whether for mining or for any or even road construction. Uh, now, the issue is this. Of all the people that are involved in this, including the people who handle the explosives, the security agencies, uh, let's, from reports, of course, investigation is still going on, but let's just assume that it's also a mining uh, uh, explosive that's meant to be used for the mining industry. Have we followed through? what should have been done. And I think one of the lessons we need to learn is just to do the right thing. Nigeria has good laws. The Nigeria explosive laws is still okay, no matter how old it is. You know, don't just change laws. Any explosives are explosives. You know, you can have modernizations, you can have new technologies and all that. But I think even the one in place, it's okay. Nigeria has uh, good laws, even about the mining industry. And uh, some of us, I was part of those who you know, uh, with the laws and even the road map and all that. It's still one of the best laws that you have in the world. Fraser's Index, all the mining indices, they rate Nigeria's mining laws as one of those that have been well crafted. And this is, in the, it's, it's all over there in the mining industry. Anywhere you go, uh, they will tell you the Nigerian mining laws are okay. Not that there are no issues here and there that yeah. we may need to tinker with. So the point is, are we really obeying these laws? All the stakeholders, are we implementing these laws? Are we monitoring these laws? Take the issue of what has just happened. Now, mining licenses, are, I've had, well, maybe uh, the investigations are still on, but it's all there in the social media and even in the regular media that, oh, these are illegal miners and all that. But again, it's all there that, look, these guys have mining licenses. Now, if right. I have... Yeah. <clears throat> I yeah. was actually trying to come yeah. to the issue of licenses yeah. since you brought up the issue okay. of the law. Yeah. Uh, you have a deep knowledge of the mining industry. Yeah. What are some of the lapses um, you know, in the area of issuance of licenses and uh, the storage and usage of explosives? Let me say this, that over the years there have been a great improvement in the way licenses are issued. It could be better. For example, in the last three, four weeks, uh, I think about 1,600 plus licenses were revoked. Those who didn't handle it well in the sense that, look, you just speculators who just hold on to these licenses without doing anything with it and uh, not renewing their licenses, no addition in terms of exploration results, and even use they were revoked. So 
let's look at the way the licenses are issued. I'm not saying it's the best, but at least marginally for any imagine reimagined mining industry, it's still not too bad. And then the recent efforts to digitalize will make things a little bit better. But then the issue is this. After the mining licenses are issued out, what happens? Let's take what next after the mining licenses are issued out. Of course, you have four years. Those who have to take it for three years, two years renewable, mining leases, 20 years. Yes, those are there. But who monitors? And even if the monitoring is there, do we have enough personnel? I'd like to let you know, which is public knowledge, that as I'm talking now, there are not less than about 2,000 mining operations going on in Nigeria, whether legal, whether illegal, whether artisanal, whether small scale, whether even medium scale, all over. And each one of these mining uh, areas will need explosive. You, there is no way you can do any kind of even exploration or mining, let me use that word, mining without use of explosives. Who are those monitoring the use of those explosives? How do those mining explosives get to the mining fields? Do we have enough personnel to really monitor the, for the mine inspectorate, which is their main duty, to really monitor how this blasting takes place? There are issues that go with it. Before you can even blast, you must have a blasting license. You must have a blaster. And the mines inspectorate officer must also be present on stand site to monitor. How many mines inspectorate officers do we have in the country? Let's look at Oyo State, for example. You get to the mines inspectorate office. I'm not, the, the, the efficiency is there, but are they adequate? Maybe about eight or nine. In Oyo State alone, where we're talking about this incident, uh, just like I said one of the programs in the morning, there are not less than about 70 mining operations going on. In Ibadan, Axis alone, between Ibadan and Abeokuta, just a few kilometers after Ibadan, and even a, a, a Iwo Road going towards Iwo, going towards Oyo Ishei, you have not less than about 15 quarries that are there. Each one of them use explosives to blast their rocks on a daily basis or at least two or three times in a, in a, in a, in a, in a week. So who monitors this? How does this thing get affected? So what are the safety measures? So the point is the laws are there. Who is monitoring movement of explosives? This is where even security agencies have to come in. Oh. How, how, and then the blasting itself, the, uh, the, the whole process, who monitors it? Is it according to safety standards? So no. these are issues we need to look at. There are breaches all along. Yeah. All right, you've yeah. been talking about monitoring and, of course, security agents, yeah. you know, have to come in here, yeah. you know, to do the effective monitoring. Yeah. But with what has happened in Ibadan, yeah. what immediate and long-term measures uh, the government need to put in place to uh, forestall future, future occurrences? First of all, I think lessons will have been learned. I know uh, one, first of all, comment the... Um, the um, president and for setting up a committee. I hope when the recommendations are out, you will have learned lessons that will go further. But the first thing is this. Let all those who are involved in issues of mining, issues of explosives, handling and all that, do the right thing. What are those things that need to be done? First of all, let's monitor movements of explosives in Nigeria. Two, we need now to get serious about monitoring our mining activities. Look, the mining industry is a very sensitive industry, and you can send out the wrong signals if the wrong things are, if the right things are not done, and people can take advantage. So we have to see that the licensing system and the licenses get to the right people who are qualified. Two, those who are doing the exploration and mining should do it even the right way. Then thirdly, who are those even monitoring and what's the level of monitoring of the revenues even that come out even from the mining industry? Safety issue is very, very key. We have had cases even in, in other mining jurisdictions, Chile and all that, where we have had disaster even in mine fields. I think these are things we can avoid. Most of the mining that is going on in Nigeria is what we call open cast. There is no underground mining, so it's just blasting and removing the top materials, and then we're going down, even with the quarries. So we can still do manageable, minimal safety I mean, uh, monitoring for all these uh, uh, mining fields. And it's very important. Then going forward, 
I would like to plead with the government, and this is very important, the personnel in the mining industry, especially in the governance sector, are not enough. I've said it initially that we have, I, even around Oyo State alone, the Oyo North area, Okeogu, uh, Komu, Shaki, Werele, all those mining axes, even close to Ibadan, 20, 25 kilometers from Ibadan, all of there, Oloju, up to the boundaries of Ogun State. There are not less than about 70 mining fields where mining goes on continuously. How many mines officers do you have? What, how many vehicles do you have? Who is monitoring what's happening in all those places? So we need to increase the personnel. And we, there are ways to do these things. It's not until you have even regular employees or employer. There are ad hoc issues. There are integrative issues you can do. With even ad hoc issues who can come in and help you to monitor. We even train the people who are handling or uh, most of the mining activities, including uh, explosives. Then we must also think about the having a kind of a centralized area where magazines can be kept in the mining fields and closely monitored by the security agencies, the DSS, the police, and even the armed forces. So if you have construction of magazines where explosives are kept and are properly constructed and they are monitored, they are registered, their usages are known, you will reduce this activity. Then thirdly, there is no reason why any explosive material should be in any residential area. It should not be in the cities. Even when you are doing construction, and let me give it to some of the big construction companies uh, that use explosive. They have well, you know, most of them or many of them have well, I mean, good storage for their magazines. I think we can copy this. So no magazines I mean, should be constructed or no explosive material should be expl I mean, constructed within residential areas. Two, there should be close monitoring of miners and those who are involved in mining. I'd like to, 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 to say this. There, there's sometimes a wrong concept of this illegal mining. You discover right. that, okay, sorry, please. Yeah. Well, well, you discover that most of those who are having licenses, those who are having licenses, most of those who we call illegal miners have a ring. It's a ring. They have license. But they now employ laborers. They employ uh, people to go and do the mining in right. the fields, and they sponsor right. them. So they, they're the ones that supply all these equipment. And most of How them, are they being perhaps they are not uh, professionals. They are not. Most of them are not professionals. All right. Then, so, uh, yes. On this note, time I know permit thank us you. to continue this conversation. Yeah. Uh, the Professor Benga Okunola, thank yeah. you so much for your insight on panorama yeah. on Ibadan explosion. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. You are still watching Panorama on MTA. We will pause here for a break. Stay with us. Thank you for staying with us on Panorama. Now to security. The Inspector General of Police Special Intervention Squad on FCT security situation says it will close down all kidnapping routes across the territory to decimate threats, restore confidence and security. Commander of the squad Commissioner of Police Benef Igwe gave the assurance as the team patrolled the Biajin and Kuchibui routes. From this spot, the rest of the journey was done on foot. They scouted through the various paths across the forest into the mountains. And the reason is not far fetched. Because this is the route. Once they kidnap within this uh, Kubwa axis, they have to climb like this. Because this is from where they go to Niger or Kaduna. So this is from where they go. This is their route. So we want to block their route. Then we are going there now to see if we can fetch another route. After several hours in the mountains, the trail went cold. The squad then focused attention at Kuchibui on the northwest, where the commander interacted with members of the community on identifying hazards. For CP Bennett Igwe and his men, this war to secure the nation's capital is a must win and a goal they are totally committed to. In Abuja, Onotu Yakubu, NTA News. And talking agriculture, the Agricultural Research Council of Nigeria has released 23 varieties of seeds for planting in Nigeria. This is coming as the federal government prioritizes research and innovation in the country's food production system. 
Musa Babaliu reports. The Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations has advised countries to invest more in agricultural innovation towards attaining food security. It is in line with this that the Nigerian government appropriated 362.9 billion naira for agriculture this year. Minister of Finance and that of Budget and Planning have recently said more windows for intervention will be opened for the ministry towards attaining food self-sufficiency. And that leads to reduction of poverty, creation of jobs, and a much more stable economy. I think when we have, when we have people that are gainfully employed and um, their, 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 their livelihoods are enhanced, then the rule of law will come into play, insecurity will, demean, will, will fade out, and uh, corruption, you know, so food security, lack, um, economic growth, job creation, um, access to capital, because this is what we have been talking about. And the Agricultural Research Council of Nigeria says it's enjoying support from the Ministry of Agriculture in carrying out its duties. The Executive Secretary of the agency, Professor Garba Hamid Sharubutu, said improved seed varieties that are resistant to pests and diseases, as well as drought, we are developed. The federal government approved the recruitment of 1,650 scientists to boost the staff strength in the area of research. Particularly the instruction is for us to recruit breeders, to recruit those that are going to bring about the genetic improvement of our local crops. Professor Sharubutu therefore encourages farmers to adopt new innovations and modern technology in their farming activities for their social economic well-being and that of the country. Musa Baba Aliyu, NTA News. Let's join Ahmed Zango for the latest in the world of sports.